What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sava Tech once again, and today we're going to go over how you can enable RAID 0 on NVMe drives for the X399 chipset. Yes, that's Threadripper, and I currently have a 1950X in the system that we're going to be demoing, so stick around. Welcome back. We're going to be taking a look at configuring the BIOS for NVMe RAID 0 and it's going to be on the ASRock X399 Tai Chi motherboard. If you want to pick it up, you can check it out in the description below, and I can confirm that it supports RAID 0 for NVMe drives. So let's get started. All right, so first thing, we're going to set up a USB stick with all of the necessary drivers that we need to have on the stick before installing Windows. Uh, to do this, you could actually just search for the X399 RAID NVMe, and then it'll pop you into this support.amd thread, and you'll just download the NVMe RAID driver for Windows 10. If you're wanting to install the OS, just grab the standalone, because this one's going to configure a RAID 0 over NVMe within the operating system. If you're using it for a separate drive, then you have the OS installed on. For today, we want to actually install the OS on this fast ass raid. Fast ass? Fast ass raid. Once you've downloaded that, you can just open your USB drive, preferably the one that you have prepped with Windows 10. If you don't know how to prep Windows 10, we can have you check out another how to that I can leave in the description below. But we have this drive already prepped and we dropped the LAN drivers on here, which is always good to have, and the RAID 10 drivers and then of course I did put the latest BIOS. You're going to want to make sure that for this motherboard you have the latest BIOS that supports NVMe RAID because not all of them did when they launched and so you can just extract that and flash it. We can talk about that in another video as well but just to have a note of that. So once you have this extracted you'll notice that you have all of the drivers here to install and you're good to go. So let's configure the BIOS now. To get into the BIOS, just tap delete when prompted and you will be entered into the BIOS menu for the ASRock X399 Tai Chi motherboard. You should come up with a sick beat for your delete key. Just to kill time. All right, now that we're in the BIOS, you're going to want to enable advanced mode. If it's not already enabled, you can enable it with F7. And once in here, you'll go over to the advanced tab. So we have two advanced options here, but once you're in the advanced tab, you're going to first want to go to storage configuration and enable RAID mode under SATA. The next step is going to go to the AMD PBS section and enable NVMe RAID mode. Once you've done this, you'll actually have to go and save changes and exit and reboot and then come back into the BIOS. Once you're back into the BIOS, you will have an option called RAID Expert 2 Configuration Utility. You'll come in here and initially the RAID will have three arrays, one for each of your NVMe drives. So you'll want to go into Array Management and delete Array. Since I already have an OS installed on this, I don't really want to do that. Once you've deleted it, an option where Controller Management is right now will appear for Create Array. Once you create the array, you will just basically want to set RAID 0 for the level to get the fastest speeds. And then you will want to select the three physical drives to go ahead and point the RAID array at those three drives. For this example, we have three Toshiba RD400s, AKA OCZ, but I believe they've just been bought out, so we'll call it Toshiba. Once you've configured all of that, you're ready to go and boot your bootable USB drive to install Windows. For us right now, we'll go into Boot Override and select the drive with our Windows install on it, which is this Samsung Flash Drive 1100. This will get you into the Windows installer options, and I'm not gonna go through the full install, I'm just going to demonstrate how you would load the RAID drivers to continue. So once in here, you will click Next and click Install Now. We will select the version of Windows we want to install for this use case, Windows 10 Pro. 
accept the license and click next and then click custom install. You will not see this at all, so keep that in mind. What you'll notice here is that we have three different partitions because it's still seeing all the drives individually. To get Windows to see the drive as a RAID, we will have to load the driver. This is where we will be pointing towards the drivers that we unpacked earlier in the operating system. Click Browse and then come down to your USB drive and select the RS2 by 64 and click OK. You will have to initially install this AMD RAID bottom device to get this working and once that's complete you're not done yet you'll have to load another driver so click load driver and click browse select the same folder and click OK and load the AMD dash RAID controller store port for the RC RAID.INF driver and click next and you will be able to install the drive now as you can see we have a full 713 gigabytes now when we did our initial install it went through and installed things like the recovery partition etc so that's why those four partitions are showing but you can see here plainly that we have 713 gigabytes available on the raid zero so that's how you do it at this point you would just click next on the RAID 0 drive and install Windows. The question now is, is it really worth it? So we're gonna reboot and show you guys the speeds that we're getting off of the RD400s. Alrighty, we're back in the OS and let's get logged in. Once logged in, we are ready to go with our Crystal Disk Mark 5. I will just make sure we have no unnecessary applications running like OneDrive, Discord, and Steam, and we will click All. All right, so as you guys can see, we're looking at 2,500 read and 6,400 write. There's one more thing I wanted to point out to you guys. I did run this at stock settings, so if we go into my benchmarks folder, I have a screen cap of Crystal Disk Mark at stock settings. And now we're at four gigahertz, but one thing I noticed is our reads were quite a bit quicker when we are overclocked. So that's something to go ahead and probably test a little bit more thoroughly. Let me know in the comment section below if that's something you want tested a little bit more thoroughly. It's also interesting that our writes slowed down. But uh, yeah, so it's just uh, something to maybe consider there. This seems outside the margin of error. So it's definitely something that needs to be looked into. We also ran an ATTO benchmark, which I will put up here for you guys as well. And it has similar numbers of over 6,000. So we're looking pretty good here and pretty consistent. Regardless, it's faster than anything else you're gonna have as far as storage goes on a single system. I also like that I can install my operating system on it now just by going through the little bit of trouble of loading the drivers before installing Windows 10. So hopefully that helps some of you all out. One of the things I did wanna note is one of the greatest use cases for this is editing 4K and 8K footage without having to specify other cache drives for Premiere, etc. So it does eliminate the need for that because the disk IO is high enough to handle it all on its own. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below and I will see you next Tuesday.